You know, I used to go and do shows uh, opening for Big, uh, for for Ice Cube and Meth and Red, like, you know, all through through college. He used to play practical jokes with me. He used to tell me, like, how good that I was and how my time was going to come, you know. But, like, during that time, like, I was still in school, too. And he was, like, a, a big supporter, and he always gave me, you know, like, like words of encouragement and letting me know that he thought I was dope, and, you know, and I, and I carry that with me. Big Boy's big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. We've been waiting on this one. Paige Kennedy, welcome to the neighborhood, brother. What's up, man? man. You've been waiting. I've been waiting. Hey, man. Waiting but for you, the dough. You've been patiently <laughs> waiting, though, bro. No, I wouldn't call it patiently. I have been importuning this man for 20 years. No, nah, man. <laughs> and it, Let me tell you, man. For those that know Paige Kennedy, they know. Yeah. And for those that don't, if it's an introduction, bro, you are one of the most talented brothers, man. Oh, thank and when you, I man. say talented, man, you know how people say, oh, he a triple threat. I don't know if you can dance real good or not. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm talking about, man, anything that you do with acting, rapping, whatever you do, even, you know, your social media stuff, bro. Yeah. Like everything is over the top. Yeah. You know, everything is good, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I'm from Detroit, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, we, we got to be good, you know, to, to get up out there. To get out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, man, how do I get out of here? Like, Damn, what so, do I got to do? Let were you born everything. in Detroit? Uh, yeah, I was born in Detroit. And um, actually, I was born in Detroit, and then six months I came with my mom here to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then she got pregnant with twins, and she was like, I can't take him. Go back to your daddy. Right. And she sent me back to Detroit. And so I spent, like, you know, the rest of my time growing up in Detroit till I went to college. Really, though? How was that growing up in Detroit, man? You know, because people look at and sometimes they just want to swing the camera to certain ways that they want the city to look. How huh. was that growing up in Detroit for you, though? Beleaguered. It was difficult as really? hell. Yeah. So yeah, you knew man. you had you had a you had an exit strategy. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. Cause you know, like it, it it's a tough. Listen, I love Detroit and I represent Detroit to the fullest. Like even in my characters, I yeah, put man. a what up dough in there. I, I do something to commemorate my city. But it it was tough. It was difficult, and and it made me strong. But it also made me scary as well. So right. that's why. I Stay away from everything. I, I don't drink. <laughs> yeah. I don't smoke. I right. don't do drugs. I'm scared of guns. Right. I, I'm nonviolent. All of that because, like, when you grow up in a situation like that, either you go gravitate to become right. that and embrace it, or you going it's going to repel you and, and scare you away. And that's the effect that it had on me. Now, had you always been into music? Always been into acting? Yeah, I, I started music. Like, I got to Detroit when I was six. My brother introduced me to hip hop when I was seven, mm -hmm. you know, with with Kool Mo D yeah. and Run DMC and Crush Groove and all. And yeah. I fell in love with that. And I started, you know, by just doing other people's raps. And I started writing my own raps. And I did my first show when I was ten years old at the State Fair. Uh, I special guest the State Fair. And um, yeah, man, you thought I, you was on then? I thought huh? I was on. <laughs> man, like, you know man, what I'm saying? Somebody <laughs> bring me a root somebody beer float. Me. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's when your writer contract was real soft. Like, yeah, I take some now laters <laughs> and some Cheetos. You know, the big bag though. Yeah, you know the, what big I'm bag, the, the big Cheetos bag, the big bag, and some Jingles. But you did you always knew that you wanted to be an entertainer? Yeah, yeah Michael same Jackson. Here. Michael same Jackson here. was was he is the be all and end all. I'm open obsequious to Michael Jackson. Bro, beleaguered, obsequious, man. Hey, man, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm a Shakespeare kid. I, I know, man, but damn, bro, like, you you got Jose Googling. You know what I'm saying? I'm, look, I'm looking in the camera like... <laughs> You know what have I'm to saying? put subtitles afterwards yeah, and like man. the definition. Yeah, do, a, man, so, do a drink game. So, messed up on so this soliquious that you're talking about. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. What did you say? You were Michael what? Michael Jackson, man. Obsequious. Obsequious. Like I'm a sicker fan I, hey, of man, Michael Jackson. I know that, bro. I was just serious. All right. <laughs> 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 this dude, man. Uh, I don't yeah, know what obsequious means. <laughs> <laughs> this dude. So so you 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 always had people that you admired. Yeah, Michael and you Jackson Michael was Jackson. the one. Yeah. He, he, he is the zenith of of you know my creativity and i just i just saw the effect that he had on people mm -hmm. and concerts and how he would just make them pass out before he even moved. He's yeah, just standing man. there yeah. and they just like cannot be a normal yeah. person with him. And and I was like, you know, I want to be able to have the effect that he has on me and other people, you I know. So that. so 
it, it, it started with him, you know, with dancing and singing, and and I was like, I I, I want to do it all. The Wiz, yeah, that man. was his first movie, and that is the movie that made me want to become an actor. Bro, to this day, but man, I can't tell you, Paige, how many times I watched The Wiz. Mm. Wiz was like the viewing that everybody looked at. And now mm-hmm. you look back at The Wiz, I still watch it. Yeah. It look a little cheesy now. But you know what I'm saying? The way it looked. Right. But man, that was one of those things, man, where when you wanted to do something, you had people that you looked at. Mm-hmm. And and of course, with Michael Jackson, The Wiz, and that was one of them things, man, I remember The Wiz is what made me want to act, too. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I remember I told my mom, I said, I want to be an actor. And she went on and got me acting books and everything, man. But I would sit and watch The Wiz as much as I could, bro. Did it scare you every time you hear that? Do, 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 do. No, no. It didn't. It didn't. That's I guess so, out of yeah. Me right now. Them Flying monkeys and everything. <laughs> I'm scared right Man. now saying that. <laughs> so do, when you go from just kind of loving and, and being a fan, when and you get a feeling like I want to do this, when did it become like kind of a reality that I can do this? Was it fairly young? Yeah, I like I said, I I was a precocious kid, so I started really early, you mm-hmm. know, and. First of all, it started doing birthday parties, like as Michael Jackson, doing the, you know, the routines of it. And then it got into rapping, and I, I was like the best rapper in elementary school, middle school, high school. And in Detroit, they don't have much of an outlet for you, like acting-wise. Mm, right. But then I went to community college to play football and got cut. And I was like, mm. you know what, let me get into theater, because that's where the real actors came from. I got mm-hmm. into Shakespeare, went to Western Michigan University, and then I was like, you know what, I want. I don't want to be good. I want to be great. So I went how to do you school. walk in and you know? Because the people don't think I want to. You know, take Shakespeare. I right. want to be a Shakespearean uh, class. Like, <laughs> right. how does that happen for you? Well, initially, it was challenging just yourself too. No, well, at first I didn't like it because I didn't understand it. Like right. I'm like, I don't talk like this. What the hell is this? I couldn't get past the first paragraph. I think the first thing we did was like Midsummer Night's Dream, and the first. Like, paragraph, I said, I don't understand any of this, and I didn't get it. Until my teacher, he showed me that these stories are still relevant now. And then once I got the stories, and then he was like, you should love Shakespeare. He was the first rapper. And then once I start to, like, figure out, like, how to equate it to myself, Mm -hmm. and once I start to, like, understand these big words and all of this stuff, and... And, and figure out that these stories are so relevant now, I became in love with it. Hey, man, as a lover of hip-hop, when he told you he was the first rapper, you should have slapped the shit out of him. We, <laughs> we, we, we let that pass. I mean, we, we celebrating, you know what I'm saying, and go all the way back. And even with 50, we was already doing this, man. So but we, 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 we'll go back. We, even with the 50 years, we're already doing hip-hop. But we'll go back. We, 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 we let, started. We, yeah, we'll let you, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? And plus now, because, you know, this whole Mobile Alabama thing, we got chairs and everything oh, now. Man. You know what I'm saying? So you can you take one of them chairs back to that instructor. <laughs> hey, man, so so you do Shakespeare. Is, is there anything that you could quote for us right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so one of my favorite plays is called uh Richard the Third. Um, because I just I just I just love this this treacherous man. And so this is a monologue that he does right after he killed Lady Anne's husband. She's burying him. He goes to the burial site and woos her and, like, turns her into his lady. Like, while she's hating him, spitting in his face, he got that much charisma. So after he does that, then he comes to us and he says, Was ever woman in this humor wooed? Was ever woman in this humor won? I'll have her. But I will not keep her long. <laughs> what? I that killed her husband and his father to take her in her heart's extremest hate with curses in her mouth and tears in her eyes, the bleeding witness of her hatred by having God, her conscience, and these bars against me. And I, no friends to back my suit with all but the plain devil and dissembling looks. And yet to win her all the world to nothing. Ha! So, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, man. Let me tell you, Detroit. man. I'm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta hey, man. <laughs> what up, though? What up, though? Hey, man. I've been here in radio going on 30 years. I think that is the first Shakespeare that I've had on. Yeah. Hey, yo, He got man. it right, too. I was following along. Oh, you, you know? was following along? Yeah, I was texting no, you. No, I know Shakespeare, so I knew it was right. 
Oh, you know it was right? Nah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, wait a minute. Oh, my God, Paige. Yeah. He didn't say OC, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you killed that, bro. Ooh, thank you, man. Yeah, man, you killed yeah, that's that. Yeah, my, that's, my, that's my favorite thing to do because I, you know, like I went to school long enough to be a doctor to be an actor. And mm -hmm. only thing is I don't get to utilize that here because it's not like they do a bunch of Shakespeare movies. And right, even right. when they do, like I might not get the audition for it. And so... You know, it sucks because I have all of this stuff in my head, in my brain. I could sit here for like 45 minutes just going off. And, you know, it's like an old song. You, right. you can't think of the words, but it just come out your mouth yeah, it, it, autonomically, you know. And so I can just say the stuff without even having to really think about it because it's just embedded in me. Damn, man. So you you take that. How do you get into acting? There's, there's a love, of course, for music. You do, you, you go, you go to college, you, and you said it. You said, man, I put about as much time going to school for acting as mm -hmm. you would for a doctor. Yeah. You know, so how does that come about when you start to feel like I'm turning this corner and I'm, I'm a professional actor now? Well, so, you know, I was told that um, I could have just left um, undergrad and came here to do, you know, what we do here. But like I said, I want it to be great. I want it to be like the greatest actor slash rapper ever. That was like my main goal, like before I even got here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's God's grace. Cause when I got here, my story is a little different. Um, I was here a month and I had done the Idaho Shakespeare Festival with a guy before I got here. And he was like, when you get here, just hit me up and we'll chop it up. And he told me about this audition, ironically called the Kennedys at Sony Studios. So I went to Sony. I didn't have a car. I had my boy drive me to Sony, and I told them that I was a courier making a delivery. Wow. This is pre-9-11. Right, right, right so, man. You, you can get I mean? on a little easier. You can't get on now. They had a white chair waiting for Hell you. Hell yeah. You to, Believe yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got them too now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I went in there. I gave them my headshot and resume. It didn't have any agent on there. It just had me in, like, 30 different plays. Right. And, and they were like, you know... Um, they basically kicked me out. But then a week later, they called me in for the actual audition. I went in. I got it. I, I tested. I, I, I got the part. It was a CBS pilot called The Kennedys with me and Randy Quaid. And, um, Did they run the pilot? No, it, no. It, never, it never made it. But that was, you know, that was enough to get me started because I, I had got here. I was sleeping on somebody's couch. Now, let me tell you something just so that you can give, like, perspective of, of what this is. Uh, means specifically. So I got here. I did that pilot. I got $25,000 for that pilot, right? So in my brain, I'm from Detroit. I'm rich, yeah, right? Man. I'm counting I'm counting the money. I'm like, oh, I'm about get to get with this. this whip. I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. She always said no. <laughs> she ain't going to say no now. Yeah. You know, I, like, I'm every, a thousand every, air. I'm like, I got $25,000. <laughs> Take a most egregious guess of what my check came back. After twenty five thousand, after taxes, I would say. Uh, did you have an agent then? Yep, agent. Did you have management or no, you just, just agent? agent? I would say you walked away with probably twelve if you're lucky, fifteen if you're hella lucky. I thought I was gonna be hella lucky. I was hella unlucky. My check was nine thousand. Yeah, man. I immediately, I immediately just like. I, I I I cried. You're you know? like, that's why they sell drugs. That's why they sell <laughs> drugs. Like, this is acting. This yeah. is some bullshit. They lied to me. Yeah, like, man. Nine thousand dollars out of twenty five thousand dollars. When 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 you looking, you counting the money. I didn't yeah. have. I was on somebody's couch. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a place. And and so you know how quickly nine thousand dollars can go. Like yeah, trying man. to get on your feet here. So that that left Damn. immediately with nothing else coming, huh? With nothing else coming. There's no residuals for a pilot that never right. even got picked up. But what that did was that got me an agent. Agent, you know, and then that got me to actually auditioning for other things right. that I just kept using the rappers. It was like a tuition into the school of experience. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, man. So, so, so that that's crazy because people probably don't they wouldn't imagine that, and you know, and that's that's the that's part of the reason that you know this whole thing that's going on with the actors and the, and the, and the strike and all of that stuff now is because like we we need that money. We need like. $26,000 just to apply for health insurance, and you got to make that every single year. You right. know what I'm saying? And people think that every actor in the in the union, in the guild, is a, is a oh, they're, they're rich. Right, like they, they, they're all right. Denzel. Right, yeah, yeah, man. And when you come to them, and we're talking about like single digit 
yeah. of people that's eating compared to how many of us are actually in SAG. Exactly. And and to break it down with even further delineation, you just have you have like a hundred percent like you are yourself, right? So you feel like, all right, I made this, this is what I get. Well, actors a lot of times only get a third of what they work for because taxes take 40%. Oh, yeah. The manager takes 10%. Yep. That's 50 right there. The agent takes another 10%. Yep. That's 60 right there. If you got a lawyer or a yeah, publicist man. or a or, uh, uh, financial don't, advisor. And don't want to eat. If you if the, you got yeah, used to food eat. too, <laughs> then, then you got to eat. You gotta and eat. sometimes people want to eat two, three times a day. Exactly. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, man you can eat much? three times a day. That's, thir- that's 30% of your 100 that you work for. Yeah, man. And, and you got to keep repeating that. Right. You got to keep repeating it. And it's crazy because your agent and your manager... They got so many of you, yeah. possibly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. How much can you talk about what's going on with, with the strike right now? Because yeah. it's just from me, knowing that there's not a lot you can speak on as far as Meg 2 being the number <laughs> one, really the number one movie. You know, It's going to be Barbie. Yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Really? Yeah, It's going to be Barbie. Yeah. And then there's Meg 2, which is a movie that you're in. Now, of course, you came in wearing your Barbie outfit. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened. I, I only just bought this outfit and then couldn't use it. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm going to get some use out of this. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah. this but then I wore it to the gas station. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, but for, for what you can't talk about and what I feel I can talk about, congratulations on having Meg, too. Yeah. In theater, it did very well. We were talking about this even coming in. It's like, and they was like, man, it's a cult classic. Yeah, Th- there's a built-in money, audience. And it's crazy because you get to a strike and you've been working for this for so long. And when you get to a point, and you got to be down with the union, you know what I'm saying? But when they say, hey, broad stroke, you can't talk about this. You know, you can't talk about this. You can't do that. And right when it's a time for you to strike, you can't. And I don't mean strike as in, you know, how right. we're striking you mean now. strike. Yeah, like this is it. This is it. Yeah, man. So so I'm just hoping that, you know, we see our way through what's going on. And, of course, it's only right that you get paid for the work that you do. Yeah. You know, and, and there, you know, there's certain things now where there's different uh, there's different ways as far as with streaming. Like, man, we should all be eating. Right. We should all be eating. But I got to congratulate you, man. On having that movie and the weekend and the pull that you guys are having with that movie, bro. Well, I I would like to say it it, it was still a uh, it was a, a beautiful weekend for me because my my album a book of pages yeah, dropped man. this weekend and my my daughter they because I couldn't go to. Uh, any other premieres? I was supposed to be everywhere. I was supposed to be all over the world. Did you really buy this suit for premieres? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't just walk around with decadence like this. Like <laughs> right. this, is, this is purchase for yeah. me. Yeah. He was like, "Man, I'm going somewhere, <laughs> yeah. and I wasn't going nowhere." And he was like, you "Wait, know? hold on. The screen actors getting in this too." <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, can they wait uh, just like a, a couple weeks before yeah. they did this? He was like, man, and I got this cut around my muscles and everything. Like, <laughs> I know, you know, this I lost all this damn weight, yeah. you know. And no, but they 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 brought my daughter in from Atlanta to surprise me, and we 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 celebrated this weekend because you know I I, I have an incredible album, a book of pages. I I have a song, Chomp, that is you know. In the 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 movie that is going all going crazy on TikTok and all over the world, they doing this dance that I created, you know. And it, it, it's a difficult thing, man, because you 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 work so hard, you you wait so long. Listen, you can be an A list actor and never get a blockbuster franchise, right. you know. And so when you are fortunate enough to have this efficacy finally be actualized, and then it's ripped away from you. Right. You know, I've been waiting all of this time. Like, oh my god! Like this, this, this is, is gonna it. be the one. This is the one. I've been, I've been, I have twenty two years of of you know almost a hundred credits, and and this is finally about to be it. You know, and then it's just like snatched away. And especially because my character is so like salient in this movie. Like everyone's talking right. about it. So so it's like I, and, and, I read and to not that be able too, to do bro. It. Where they was like, your role is is. Is defining. Yeah. Damn. But, you know, it, and I know that people don't subscribe to it greater later, but people will find it. 
and and it's your work. You know what I'm and saying? And it's still there. Yeah. You know, people still seeing it. Yeah. It's just, you know, I can't capitalize yeah. off of it. You want some nah. this and that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> As you should, though. You know? And that's what you're supposed to do, man. You're supposed, you know, we're in a position where we're supposed to promote our craft mm-hmm. and be happy and, mm-hmm. and celebrate, celebrate the hard it. work. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. you work hard. You play a little bit. Some yeah. are play hard, whatever it is. But... But you should be able to celebrate that, man. And and I mean, it's just, you know, a, kind of a sign of the time, too. Right. But know? hopefully, hopefully, you know, they they realize that, you know, we are important, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and, man. And listen, AI is coming. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. It is on its way. Um, but we are trying to stave it off as long right. as we can because right. you know they 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 basically it's kind of like uh, you know like the the other bomb movie where the scientists mm-hmm. like they're scientists they they can't not create they can't not try and do what they were born to do but did did he want to like kill all of those people with that i don't think so right but but his brain just works in a way that i have to move forward and that's what we do as human beings but i think that we are moving forward to like eviscerate ourselves to get rid of us yeah human beings And, and that's what i'm saying man like it's not going anywhere. Then you got to figure out how do I coexist with this? Yeah. Because AI is not is here. It's coming. Even in the last, just this year, in the last few months, it seemed like AI has been everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're starting to see it a lot more. And then when it comes to what we do on the entertainment side as well, man, with streaming, so many different outlets, it's like, bro, like, we got to figure out a way where everybody can eat off of this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when there's so many intricate parts of making this thing called Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you see now with the strike, how many people are affected, not just the actors. We're talking about, you know, catering Cast, services. Craft yeah. services. Craft, makeup. Yeah, man. Secure, like, whatever Every, it is. Everything. This yeah, whole man. city. This whole city revolves around that. So I'm, yeah. I'm surprised the mayor hasn't jumped in himself to try and be an arbiter in this situation to get it back. Well, I know that the writers... Last Friday, yeah, man, they were they were back in talks, and I, I I think like I said, I think they are going to come around this time, and they're like, all right, well let's let's give them what they want for however many year, what three years or whatever, you know, before you know we right back yeah, to this yeah, again. Yeah, but yeah. it's important. It's it's so many lives that have mm-hmm. been affected by this that are not just actors. If people feel like oh that you know these guys are are, are right. complaining about that, right. and everybody think like, Tom Cruise complaining. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't Tom Cruise. And when you talk about uh, the, the new album, right? And a new album is a book, book of, of pages. pages. And with a book of pages, there's giving up. What you had sent to me. Yeah. Bro, lyrically. Passion, what you put into this song. Why did you feel? For, first off, give us a backstory for someone that didn't hear it. What you're talking about in this particular song? So in this song, giving up, you know, it was just a a maelstrom of unfortunate events that all came crashing down on me contemporaneously, like it, like all at the same time, you know, and. I'm very good at putting a smile on my face and being able to, you know, know that God got me. But like, I'm still a human being, you know. And so when everything is just happening one at the one at at the other uh, after another in my personal life, you know, or in my creative life and my career, you know. So I was I was having you know issues with with my mom because my. I had a lot of loss that happened. So when I was filming the movie last year, like uh, both of my brothers die and my little sister die all within like a month span. Oh my and God. so like my mom, my mom basically like she lost all her kids, but me and my niece, my little sister's daughter had just died in 2019, you know? And so like all of this is happening and my mom was like, I got to get out of Detroit. So I was like, okay. So I get a house for her to go to Atlanta with my daughter, you know. And and then this trouble and issues that's happening there with my mom and and with my, my kids and just a lot of stuff that was happening in my personal life. And then you go to the career thing because God teaches me balance. Every blessing he gives me is attached to a challenge. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to, like, take the good with the bad of it. But, like, it was so much bad happening, and then this strike comes right at the time that I feel like my whole, 
you know, life is about to change and then that alters that. And so sometimes we get cavern thoughts and 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 I got to that place where I just felt like everybody was taken from me. Nobody was given. And like, what am I even doing here? And, you know, sometimes we we, we go through those things. And, and because I don't drink, I never even tasted alcohol before. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't have like a vice to like help me right, get through right. these things. You know, the only thing I have is my music. You know what I'm saying? And so I pour a lot of my my life into my music because it's my therapy, you know? And then I also feel like there might be other people in the world that's right. going through things that might hear me say it in the way that I say it that could be helpful to them. Hey Amen. Paige, when you sent me Giving Up, right? Mm -hmm. You had to know I didn't listen to it I until know. I listened to it. Yep, because I, I knew. I knew there was, there was no, no way you way could respond in any other way than how you responded when you actually listened to yeah, it. Yeah, man. And I, and you see how how I continue to like importune you to listen because I I I, I know I'm like he needs to hear this because yeah. if he does he, yeah. he's gonna feel a certain kind of way. And as soon as I heard it, my my wife was like, "Who is that?" And I told her because I was playing it loud. Yeah. And my wife and my daughter was like, who is it? And I told her, I said, man, it's Paige Kenny. I do, 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 do. And, dude, I was sitting there, and I was hanging on to every word. Uh, Ooh, man, oh, man, bro. Uh, you said a lot in that motherfucker. <laughs> man, bro. Yeah. And that, it just the build, the way that it was building. Yeah. You know, like, what you do with your voice, man, that's... That's the acting thing, see? That's yeah, I could tell. That's what differentiates me from other rappers is that I have that to draw from as well, you mm -hmm. know? And like I, like I said to you earlier, remember I said how I haven't been able to utilize the training in Shakespeare, like actually doing Shakespeare, but there's things that I learned in graduate school in doing Shakespeare that allowed me to just be better as an actor, period. Right. You know, that, that I can't necessarily do Shakespeare, but there's, certain things that I learned how to do in doing Shakespeare that I can add that maybe others, you know. You can hear know. it even just in the delivery and even in giving up. You can hear the build up. You can hear what you're doing, your, your voice. You can yeah. you can feel and hear the frustration. Yeah. And that comes from, you know, that's got to be your acting background. It's got to be Shakespeare. It's got to be life. You know, yeah. it's crazy because even what I do with radio page, it's like, my whole life kind of set me up for what I do in radio, mm -hmm. you know, with the enoughs, enough hip hop, enough rock, enough pop, enough life, enough L.A. And mm -hmm. so everything was like, oh, OK, yeah, all I got to do is get in here and kind of be me. Yeah, because I learned so much before I got here. And of course, you learn while you're here as well. But, yeah, it was like, man, you just become a sponge. And what, and what I can see when you say, man, you know, Shakespeare helped me, I can hear it in the delivery. Yeah. You know, and, and you know how to bring the passion or the pain or the, right. you know, and, and on Phenomenon, there's a line <laughs> where you say that Biggie kind of, did, did Biggie really, like, give you a prop or? Yeah, man. Look, uh, Big, so, so for those who don't know, I, you know, I used to go, and do shows uh, opening for Big, uh, for for Ice Cube and Meth and Red, like you know, all through through college. Like I, you know, I've been around uh, these guys for a very long time, and you know, I, and I had supporters like like legends that that have been supporting me as a rapper like for a very long time, and Big was one of them. Mm. You know. Um, he used to play practical jokes with me. He used to tell me, like, how good that I was and how my time was going to come, you know. But, like, during that time, like, I was still in school, too. So mm -hmm. I, I, was in, I was in college, you know, still going around and, and doing these things. So I, I couldn't, like, necessarily just, like, leave and, right. and bounce and go because, you know, I was, I was growing myself, like, to, you know, preparing to be an actor. But I still would be able to go and do these spot dates and – and he was like a, a big supporter and he always gave me, you know, like like words of encouragement and letting me know that he thought I was dope and you know, and I and I carry that with me. Oh, so it wasn't like a one and done. It was a, a no, kind of a, a relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, there and there's there's footage <laughs> there's footage of us uh somewhere, you know, like doing things like I you know, I used to like battle people, like even in his hotel room, me and Yuckmouth from yeah, uh, Loonies. Loonies. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Me and him had a, a epic battle in in Biggie's room. 
um, Lil C's was there, Numbskull, and, and, you know, a lot of the bad boy people when they recorded. And, you know, we used to have, like, fun times. Hey, man, following you on social media and knowing how well you do on social media, knowing that you could be a funny guy as well, you know, but when it comes to your music, you know, there's some people that say, man, I'm just going to do parody. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why was it so important for you to stay to to your craft? Like, when you write and when you deliver, that's not like, oh, this dude is playing with it. Yeah. You know, so what made you made sure that you didn't do the parody thing as opposed to how you spit for real, for real? You know, because I was a rapper first. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? That that was the the essence of me, like the impetus of me being a, a creative started off being a rapper. And so, you know, I, I just do what I've always done. You know, I, I've had tons of albums, albums in middle school, high school, college that are just for my friends because I ain't have a deal. I have a way of right. being able to, you know, uh, spread this this music around the way that we have now. And so so I've I've always done it that way. Now, I'm going to be honest. Part of the reason that I even got on Vine, like I, I was right. big on Vine. I was like top five black viners in the world. And part of the reason I did that was because... I knew I had to make them laugh to give them what I actually have to give them, cause that's that's how you get anybody, right? And so, so I I, I started I started doing these um, ciphers. I did this this slaughterhouse cipher where I just dressed up as everybody, crooked eye, Royce and Five wow. Nine, Eminem. I did all of them, and I'm. It's just me, but I'm rapping in their perspective, their bars. I look like them, all of it together, and and you know they all they all got it. M got it. They all loved it, and then I I kept doing it. I I got a, a Nicki Minaj cipher <laughs> where I'm her and I'm Ludacris and Cassidy, Dope. and you know I got Lil Wayne like so so I, I got like three of these ciphers. You know I got one with Fred the Godson, Lil Wayne, mm, man, yes. and and Jadakus. You know, and so I I would just to show my talent. That like not only can I just sound like them, I, I can actually right. write in the way that they write bar wise, and that seemed to got more you know accolades than even just like my regular music. But sometimes you got to make them laugh to be able to get their attention, and then they can hear the yeah. craft in it. Yeah, you know. And so I, you know, so with my music. I do everything. Like on this album, there's social commentary. There's there's love songs. There's straight bars, which I'm, you know, my core fans know me for. There's there's uh heartfelt things yeah. like the like the giving up. You know, I, I just want it to be extremely diverse in everything I do. You know, just that's why I do comedy as well as I do drama, as well as I do Shakespeare. You know, I want to just always you don't know where I'm coming from so that you're you're never bored with me. Hey man, when you look at just the body of work and when I listen to Giving Up, you say that you spent like was it 100 racks? Yeah. So you spend 100,000 of your money. Of my own and money. And for you to spend 100,000, that means it's already taxed, it's already yep. agents, it's already, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So I spent all my money on that damn movie on this. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, go get that right now if you listen. So you take that and you put it in yourself. I put it into myself. Yeah, you know? man. And 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 listen, I, maybe I have to, because cause some, some people, uh, you know, are pejorative about like my business acumen and they're like, well, that doesn't make sense business wise. Like if you're getting your money here, and you're putting it into this and this is not making revenue revenue then it doesn't make sense and and they could be right you know in a business it's not a smart business sense but my music I feel is indelible I feel like my music 20 years from now you can listen to tw- right. giving up 20 years from now and it, it's yeah. not a wave it's you know it's like Shakespeare Shakespeare creates stories stories can never get old they're there for in perpetuity mm-hmm. and 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 that's the type of music that I make that you can play it in whatever era because it's real. It's not a wave. Do you feel like you constantly introducing yourself though? Because for those that don't know, <laughs> they right. don't know. Like, and then when this? they know, it's like, oh my God. Right. You know, like we had to stop down so I could just play giving uh, giving up for them just so they can hear what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I say like, man, this dude is a is perfect at his crafts. Oh man. Plural. 
Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you. And speaking of, I would like to take this time to give you your approbations because I've been Jesus wanting to do this. Christ, I'm sorry, man. Hey, Come man. on, man. I, got... <laughs> I, know you, I know you're not spelling it right, but you said I know you're not spelling it right. <laughs> we'll figure out approbations. At, say it again. <laughs> approbations. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's on it. She's, she's, she's Is back. it AP or AP? Yeah, AP. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, so that's just like, uh, uh, yeah, so what is props. it like? TNT? I, I want to give Bev- you your Oh, I thought you said, oh, I thought you said, oh, okay. Approbation. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I thought you said abbreviations. Uh, no, no, I, 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 no just go ahead. To, I just want to say to you, because you you are always extolling about your guests and you make everyone, <laughs> you, make, <laughs> you make everyone feel Louis, so good. I'm losing, I'm, I'm losing the audience. They are, they're walking out of there like, come approbations on, man, you got one is from appreciation, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, go and ahead, I'm bro. I'm out of here. <laughs> Please, let me have this love. <laughs> Please let me shower this. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, uh, all right. So, I just want to say that um, you you always make everyone comfortable. I watch everything you do. I I've listened to you the entire time that I've been in Los Angeles. You know, and you are my favorite out of every like all time because you're so witty, you're so kind and benignant to all your guests, to, to your host, to everyone that you work with, and you know you don't have to be. Like you big, like you, you don't have to be that way. It takes more energy to be nice than it is to be mean. Cause you got to try and be funny. You got to try and, and you just be yourself. And I think that that's such an amazing thing. And, and, and I'm so grateful to be able to have you in my life and Thank to be you, able brother. to sit with you because like you are God sent like and you you say all these things about me, but I feel the same way about you. So I just Thank you, thank bro. You. And, and I'm telling you, man, this is this is gonna be one of many. This is gonna be one of many, bro. I thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Oh yeah. I thank you for hanging out with us, bro. Yeah, I, man. Your energy is amazing, man. Thank you, bro. Even when I came out and, and just the the embrace you gave, that yeah, was like man. that was real. That's real. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and I wish you would have let me know that we had to dress up today. <laughs> I felt I walked out there, man. I felt so underdressed, but he was like, "Big, I bought all these clothes for the premiere, and my, you know, my Meg too, like run, and you know, it's it's not going down it. respectively to the strike, but yeah, he was like, I gotta wear this, and now I'm, a, I'm now I'm about to go on Warner Brothers and sweat my suit out. Oh yeah, yeah, man, we 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 walked the line as well, man. We've walked the line, man, but you got to come back into the neighborhood. And even if there's nothing connected to it, just come and hang out with yeah, us. Man. And that's real talk, bro. Oh, yeah. That I'm, is real I'm talk. I'm available. Look, I, you know. I, Especially I, right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> I know, right? Ain't nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason you here is there ain't nobody else to talk to. <laughs> yeah. I talk like, to myself <laughs> when there is no one to talk to. Yeah, this man. It's like being in COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How right. did you get through COVID, man? Like, even, th- and then that's another thing. The world shut down. Yeah. And so when the world shut down, everything that we do shut down. Right. You know, and then you fast forward to damn near three years and some change, if that, Mm -hmm. and then your world shuts down. Shutting down again. Yeah. So how did you get through? Did you get COVID by any chance? I I did get COVID right. twice. Okay. I think I got sick once. And then one time I, I, I got COVID. I was doing the, the we were just coming back on the Upshaws. Oh, yeah, man. And Are y'all was, coming back for another season, do you know? Or are we kind of limbo with everything I, going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell when you're going, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, so, so I, what I did in COVID is me and my son, yeah, man. we got together and we just started doing TikToks. Yeah, I saw and we And we, we, we blew up on TikTok and, you know, I got to like almost 3 million followers by just like doing fun stuff with him that yeah. we used to do on How old Vine. is your son? Man, he is 25 right wow. now. And you guys been watching him since he was 13. Man, that's crazy. Because even when the pandemic, that's when I saw y'all, it it felt like y'all were really increasing, yeah. like, you know, the buddy system mm-hmm. as far as y- y'all doing things together. Yeah, and then, you know, he's following me now. He... He's he's following the the footsteps. He he's he's acting. He he got on his first two TV shows this year. He's doing the music, and you know we just trying to make this Kennedy thing a legacy. I heard you know, that. So man. we can we can get the black Kennedys to have that legacy. Yeah, tell me about you know it, what man. I'm saying? And then I can just say I know you. <laughs> you know, it's got it's something that come with being a part of the crew. Hey, you, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? You a part of it. All right, remember you said that. Yeah, yeah. I need to go give me one of these suits, man. Right. <laughs> 
But I, I'm going. I'm what going to like. Want, man, I got these out of Thailand. <laughs> no, <Nah, Yeah>. really. <laughs> I'm going down to Hollywood suit outlet myself. <laughs> Give three with the matching ties and the shirt and everything. Yeah, you man. know, big around the neck, but I know how to clip it in the back <laughs> so it works the right way. But man, Paige, thank you for coming thank into you. the neighborhood, thank man. Thank you so much. You guys are so um, awesome, amazing. Thank and you the project is a book of pages. A book of pages. This out. Clever right to hit it there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's Available. Out there. It got. It got. It got great features on there. You yeah, know, man. Ice tea, crooked eye. Yeah. Yeah. They got, uh, you got, yeah, you got people that's really in the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, man. And, and also for those out there, man, Meg Two is is right there available for you guys as well, man. Make sure y'all go check that out because the work is done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The work is done, and I'm and I'm sure the work is beautiful, bro. And I can tell that you you put a lot of passion into what you do. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Thank you. All right, you now, go see it too. I shall. I will. <laughs> I, no, you know what? I shall. I will. All right. We got to put that on. Oh, no, nah, I can't yeah. say. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put no, it on no, no. whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Because if she put it, we had this thing called Ani's Outings, right? Yes. No, put no. Put that Paige, number one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why you don't want it on Ani's Outings. Uh-oh. Because we never go. Oh, damn. Yeah. Don't put that on there. Yeah. You better not type <laughs> yeah. nothing, girl. Yeah. Put no. your feet. <laughs> grab that grapefruit juice. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, don't put it on there because then <laughs> you, you be, I think we got, what, over 100 things there? Oh, we got a good amount. How much? Yeah. yeah, look at that. She's Y'all scrolling. Y'all never doing <laughs> yeah. any of that. So, so we're let, supposed to let, wear pink. Say so what now? We're supposed to wear pink to the neighborhood, but he beat us to it. Oh, yeah. We were going to have a pink day. Yeah. This it's, is a pink day. You got yeah. your pink there. <laughs> you got nah, pink we, cuticles. Damn, man. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, man. It'd be greater later. Can you wear that suit again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. That's one of them suits where people are like, you can't wear that again, Paige. <laughs> and I, and I, it's right here. It's buried here. Damn. Right here. Put me up in this one. Man. Get a shot up here. Can somewhere. I have it? Then? <laughs> You know, yeah, I can't wear it no more. So yeah, it's gone, bro. <laughs> and, and when I hugged him, I was like, "What is this silk?" <laughs> <laughs> when I hugged him, I was like, "Oh yeah, this He's ain't like, Hollywood damn, suit outlet." Yeah, I was like, "This ain't Hollywood suit outlet." <laughs> and I was like, "Man, your, is your name in there?" <laughs> yes, it is. See, ah, oh, oh, you see that right see? there? See, hey. it says Paige Kennedy in there. Hey, you know yeah. what it is? Uh huh. <laughs> that title so we, is special. Yeah, wacko, we definitely can't take it then. <laughs> Dude, man. You can wipe that out. Remember the white out? Yeah, you said? yeah, the old school white out. I just cut it out. Take it to my guy. He put, he put my name in there. I got a signature card. Paige Kennedy in the neighborhood. Big boy's neighborhood.